most likely. So by using variable bitrate, it works better. From my experience, maybe the software has changed, but it's easier to get the job done uh, without something going wrong. So back to the streaming part. Keep on getting sidetracked. So CD Baby is the person, are the people who distribute it throughout the world and in YouTube nowadays. Once I get done with the full CD and you know, submit it, I will see results in YouTube within two, three days. Then I search up the album and it's there. There's an option when you go through the submission process, a button where you can collect royalties. So I'm collecting royalties from Facebook and YouTube. There's also a, a place that your stuff's also registered with. Mine is BMI and ASCAP. So those two are my things. So when you submit a CD, your tracks, that's why I chose 50 because it's the max. And I thought, well, that's to get the best of the investment. So if I submitted 5 or 50, you'd still be paying the $89 price. So I decided to go 50 because I think I would regret it if I just did 20 songs per CD when I could have done 50. I would have felt like I cheated myself and I, so that's why I chose 50. It was more of a more of a, you know, I got to use what I got to, to the fullest. And I don't want to waste the opportunity that is given to me. So 50, but I've learned. And <clears throat> two years later, or we've learned how to title our stuff better. And it's all about, it's just process. It's all it is. Um, so when, when they send it to all these places, iTunes usually takes the longest or in Apple for reporting. It's pro it's probably true. You don't see much funds for the first nine months. But you do, you do see it. And now I release these albums under free for all, um, or, or do it all, do them all, including the free ones. So there's some sites out there. Um, I don't really know the name, but if you were to do my album name, like CJ Zero Zero. CJ010, try that one. If you type that in Google, CJ010, space CWSPOD, those two names together, it should pull you up on all the pages that I'm listed at. And, okay, so these are instrumental tracks. You are more likely to get distributed worldwide if the world can understand it. So most of us understand music, whether you are Chinese, Hispanic, no matter the color, shape, or sound animals even like it and how big is the marketplace for English only rapping um, especially my style 
there, there wasn't a big market for it anyway. So if I wanted to do what I love to do, I have to start learn to make music. That was, again, the only thing that made sense was to now let's just make music and somehow work what I love to do into that. So we've learned a lot to become a service man. I read somewhere and it stuck with me that you have to provide a service. Why would someone buy this from you? And what's great about instrumentals is if you are a good talker and you got rich material you want to talk over, you don't have to cater to the advertisers. The advertisers or like YouTube, that's why I offer it for free because it eventually gets on YouTube somewhere. And I remember doing this in the early days when I was using other people's music. It was frustrating because sometimes you get copyright strikes and you're like, you know, what the F? So for doing it for free, people will not get that with this setup. So they're more likely to use it for their setup if they don't have to worry about getting a copyright strike from some place. And the big places in the world, YouTube matters. Uh, Facebook matters. Probably the two biggest platforms, Apple, you know, the, the three biggest platforms in, in the world that are going to pay attention to you. Now you got radio stations, movie theaters, uh, special events. People are taking it with their phones and YouTube listens real good. Is it the spider bots that weave through the internet can pick up on this kind of stuff because they don't want to get sued so they really listen for that copyright they got to protect their ass uh, so BMI doesn't go after them for stealing so I got people working for me now and I don't have to worry and I figure okay I will pay for a media fire account you can find it on my twitter page dot com slash cwspod scroll down a bit till you find media fire it's the latest link it's um I updated it to include the cds I um, so you get to download the WAV files, the WAV files that I submit to CD Baby. So you probably get it in great quality, real good quality. If, if your stuff, so Google already understands that. So by giving it out to people freely, we'll eventually go back to YouTube. YouTube is listening hard and for that fingerprint of your song. How does YouTube pay me? Well, if you're not a YouTube Red premium person, then you will see ads across your screen. You're forced to watch ads and those ads are what pay me. If you're not watching ads, then part of your monthly payment, like I got a family plan that costs 22 bucks every month. And that money that I pay YouTube goes to people like me. Every video that I watch, which is basically 15 a day 
YouTube keeps track of that at any time. YouTube can identify something like my music on the fingerprint. Because remember, every song has their own identification and it's a digital fingerprint. There's no two songs that have the same fingerprint. <clears throat> so when, so when the um, <clears throat> system reads the song, it has like a tag in it with your fingerprint on it. Some added information that the bigger places have when identifying this kind of stuff. And it's got numbers attached to the fingerprint. And these numbers then go back to BMI and CD Baby and Mia uh, um, underneath. So now you're dialing in numbers right back to CD Baby and it goes into the account in CD Baby's account until your money reaches 10 bucks. And when it reaches Monday or Sunday, they're going to send that payment to you and you'll see it in your eBay on a Monday. That's how the system works. So to be honest, no one needs to know that I exist. And in many ways, I believe that I don't need to promote my service. It will eventually promote itself. I constantly get ridiculed over how little money I make. But, you know, I don't let that bother me because I see how it works. I really do. And I want to produce instrumentals and it's not so much about freestyle anymore. Even though I do enjoy it, it's harder on my body for one. Um, it, it still takes a lot of prepping and a lot of mental discipline to get through the full four hours. Editing it is a pain in the ass when it comes to my voice because it's it's not made for rapping and so I have to deal with a lot of things when it comes to vocally and that's why I like instrumentals I can do this quickly so I've found a system <clears throat> that doesn't involve me in it and that's where you go ah oh. so it really isn't about me it's about a service that I made for myself but then I was like ah oh. it's about you it's like giving it to you but I'm taking advantage of a payment plan I'm taking advantage of what is offered to me in 2019 it could change but the way it stands now the more instrumentals I can distribute around the world whether free whether I'm selling them on CD Baby for $2.99 or I'm sorry, a um, dollar ninety nine. Whether you go to YouTube and you're listening uh, with through ads or your um, payment plan, you got Spotify. You have all of these other sites, man, that are working for you. They sit there twenty four hours a day like whores and bitches handing out your flyers if anyone comes close. And I like that this is done automatically. It, it keeps on growing and you probably couldn't sustain a living doing just one or two albums, especially when you're not that experienced on marketing 
you're not programmed to socialize to the public in the correct way. We're a creator, so we're lacking that possibility range that we could be a good marketer. So I, I have to use the system to my advantage once again. And 50 tracks, 300 albums, 50 times 300 is 15,000. That defines what Creative Wind Studios is and that defines the whole career. That's what I'm here for. That's what I figured out. And it takes a while. It took me probably 39 years living on this earth to understand it. The more I participate on this practice, you you find hints, hints, tips, tricks. You got experience, and a lot of times it leads into bigger and greater things that you never imagined. So you got to start from somewhere and look at this or mine and it builds like you don't know where you're going but the point here is to give it your all even when like my vocals I don't know where my vocals would go but the reason why we would do it no matter what because there are rewards because the vocal box now gets strengthened and if you're not doing it for yourself do it for your vocal box do it for the practice do it because this is your job. Uh, this is what defines you. And this is sort of like the reason. That's the reason that you're here. That's the reason. Now you got purpose. And it takes a while to figure out what your purpose is is and I didn't really find my purpose until I was 39 40 years old in just this past four months we signed Wadri instead of Casper Script Casper Script is a, is a virus Casper Script is a virus from Linux. Casper Script is also um, an invisible script. Freestyle improv. Casper is the friendly guy. So he was a bunch of dudes traveling along with me. But then Wadri finally made sense. Because I've told this story many many times of when I walked to the heaven's gates and they were like do you have any last words and I was like we ain't done rapping yet or I ain't done rapping yet but we ain't done rapping yet so Wadri is the person who we signed so it took a long time to break the belief of who I chill with. It took me a long time to understand the truth that no one sees. Only you see it and it's real to you and it will die with you. But I use that as like that's who we are now we ain't done rapping yet and just you know when I sat down I was like you know we're gonna do a week of rapping like like I said you know rapping with my voice it's gotten better over the years is one of the hardest things to do 
when it comes to editing or EQing, because many things can go wrong. And I'm always trying to tweak and twerk it. Y'all understand that no two albums really sound the same, but I understand that no matter what, I need to lay off the compression as much as possible. And these last three albums, that's exactly what I did. I didn't do any compression it until the mastering point. Before I would have, you know, ran a few compressors, probably twice at least, before it got to this point. And so I was like, damn, you know, I screwed up 21 albums or so with, they don't sound bad, and maybe that's why I got tinnitus, uh, or why I no longer want to work with cymbals, and now I turn down the treble quite a bit. Apologize if it, if it sounds dull, but, you know, I don't, I don't like it because I sit here for many, many, many hours and with loud music, usually I have these things blasting, not too loud though, but blasting loud. So that's like eight hours, you know, four hours of loud and just really trying to pay attention to the sound and how, how it, how it is. Cause you're listening to it at the same time, you're you're also <clears throat> like actively participating in like, well, what would it sound like on the editor? So you're always trying to critique and work with it. You know, what, what's funny is I'm not the same person who I used to be. And what's also funny is I've always said that I'm not a religious person but also recently within the last year you know 39 40 i really started to understand not really what a second chance is but i understand it's a journey to be taken so with that you know it's probably all in my head but it's a good story. It's it's what keeps the sparks going. And it will not end. But it will end when when I end. So I think the world a lot of us get confused when it comes to my reality and your reality. It, is skewed you know it's you know you want to see it this way but all we got to do is laugh at the joke because it was like oh he's telling a joke <laughs> you know you don't really get it but that made me i used to be a hater on religion but now, not so much. Now I've understand it rather than being like, Daddy, why did you do this to me? You know, I'm having, I don't have conversations nor really thoughts with the other side. And that's weird because I tell the story of like, yeah, I've been to the Heaven's Gates then you know there's this resistance about me that you know well I've been there so I should be real all up in I want to know about it you know I don't know because I have watched a lot of culture documentaries and a lot of religions that these people follow and then I've watched a bunch of other documentaries validate other documentaries and at the end of the day, it's a moral system in our head. You gotta have something like, we ain't done rapping yet. That seems to be my something. Before, I was definitely lost, but Wadri is what turns on the screen when I turn on, open up my eyes in the morning. That's what it is now, you know? I'm just a completely different person and I don't know what you call this 
but I struggle of be like, yeah, you know, I'm back here from heaven. I mean, it's it's it it's really what I interacted in. But was it because I was taught it? If I was taught any other language, would my near-death experience have been any different? If I don't know English, but I knew Chinese, you know, what if my life never went into music? Maybe that near-death experience wouldn't have happened. But what if I wasn't connected to music? What if I was like, yeah, you know, I ain't got shit to say. I could have, but I didn't have any choice because that's really what I saw at that time. What was this person I'm trying to become? And I brought it all the way there. And I didn't like think anything on the way there. But after it, you know, I was a changed person. And that was 15 years ago. And we just learned something about that experience, about us, how we can work it into our lives as motivation and energy. We can harvest this weird ass energy I just made and use that to boost the reason of why we keep on doing this ridiculous 15,000 goal it puts it in perspective of the reason why and and I don't have conversations with God but I am definitely okay with your belief system I'm not don't ever want to change you I I just want to inspire the knowledge and the belief system you already got you know if you believe in in God like I want to make sure you keep on doing what you're supposed to be doing there Um, I'm no longer trying to lead you at an early part I was like we can't be dictating people because that may made may make me look like a cult leader or like Martin Luther King where I could develop a target on me so but I still wanted to talk sarcastic you know sort of get into people's heads so I learned how to talk properly instead of at people I talk in the sky and hope someone's listening and I talk in a way that if anyone's passing by hopefully the the information will stick with them and my wife has nightmares when we have fights uh, because my voice and the practice the job has made me skillful I know how to cut and I know how to talk to get the point across without jabbering on forever that is something I used to do a lot jabber on forever and now that I've learned to talk people respect you they're almost afraid but I've learned not to engage really in conversation like big conversation wherever I go because this interview inside of me starts leaking out I'm like asking questions like oh yeah because I generally want to learn about whatever they're interested in so I ask a lot of questions and sometimes emotions comes up and like 
I make them explode. Like, I know how I do it, but I'm not trying to, like, make or break anyone. I just want to understand. That's all it is. And, and the way my interactions go are not attacking. It feels like it could be attacking. But it's more like making you realize your true self like in in the end you're gonna be driving home a changed person because what I've said I've said it just right that you understand and that's one of my powers it's one of my secret things that people people don't know But it's a skill. I like to say freestyle is a skill, not a gift. Because to have a skill to, to fix a computer, you have to go by a guideline. And I think with a gift, you just do it. I'm talking and completing sentences is a gift. I've learned how to do it so well, I can do it without even thinking about it. I can't do freestyle like that. Freestyle is more of a, we gotta warm up, you know, we gotta do our stretches. I gotta get myself high. You know, I'm, my mind can't be killed from the, um, just like emotions can't be on a darker side, so I tend to try to think more positive. So I want to come in here and do and create good things. When I start talking about dark energy, then like, I don't mind talking about it, but it's hard to listen to. that make sense I don't like to listen I don't mind making songs about you know sexual things but when it comes toward you know like negative gain towards a person's life I don't want anything to do with it and <clears throat> I'm okay dealing with it, but and sometimes with interacting in it, it can be escalated just because I'm so interested and I don't let it get to me that sparks can fly. So I truly believe that there are no monsters under my bed. And there, there must be a heaven outside of my mind. Although I can really picture it as Mario Land. That's how, that's how it looked like. Mario Land as you were picking, you know, the world to go to in the clouds. But, you know, I think much of that was taught. But the whole thing was real, like that. I can't recite any songs over any lyrics that I've made in the past. But this is one story that has stayed concrete. It stayed the same and it changed. So that's why this whole thing became a tool belt service. I got tools. A belt, because we're we're producing, and a service, service music. Hillary Clinton can play this before she gets up on stage, and using what you know during this second chance, you know of Wadri, understanding who Wadri really is. I don't even know who he really is though. He's the guy that talks like this. Yeah. 
you hear them a few times. I don't know if I've released any songs to the public with him in it yet. So he's an alter ego, not like a demon or an angel. He's an alter ego that we are creating as we go along. But you have to create him slowly so he doesn't corrupt your whole dream. And if I can use Wadri to my advantage, then I have touched the core of this whole reason I'm here. I've now made a connection. I'm no longer sitting back here being like, damn, I hate my life, you know, nothing's going right. I now have a connection to this thing. So I don't want to ruin it. And I gotta be true to it, just like to myself. That's what life is. You're either true or you fake. But I believe, just like when I come in here, this room is fake. It's real. But I'm given the opportunity and the permission to be fake, to play the part the director wants me to act. This room is an acting room. It's a practice room. It's a given the permission room. It's your allowed room. Uh, but just don't overstep the boundaries, especially when it comes to names or people. Those two things never talk about. Keep your swear words to a minimum. Um, that impresses people. We're not looking for the impressment, but who needs them in there anyway? If we're gonna judge ourselves for 200 years, swear words have always been around, but I don't wanna include them. So we talk about sex. Sex has always been around. Money, money has always been around talk about um can i do it uh so that will always be here i suspect that's how it was 500 years ago or even a thousand years ago i suspect that love and hate and and that is also what was going on even in their stupidity you know um just like the history of aviation those guys were considered smart no they're stupid See what's happening in the other rooms. Thanks, peeps. Now, Wakanda has got three peeps in it. It's because he was having a VIP. So 25 and 3. I'll chill in here for a bit. I just usually just stare at the text, you know? So. I'm in the VIP lounge, homies. I'm gonna chill here. Oh, we got DJs on. On cam. He's a nice looking guy. Let's see what's happening here. Not really anything, but I'm a chill. I must 
switch cams. I'm gonna switch this side one over here. I thought this track sounded like Sir Mix a lot. Let's see if it's Sir Mix a lot. <coughs> Wrap it like this. Put you back on the four away for a bit. We're gonna sit here and get high. This also helps me when visually looking at um, uh, what I know. That you can make the cuts easier if you, if you do something like this too. Where are we going to put you? 